Simon Bolivar, Art of Venezuela. For 300 years, the Spanish crown dominated its South American provinces. Denied public office and free trade, Creoles yearned for equality and self-government. It took a man of great military might and political vision to lead Spanish territories from the shadow of bondage to the light of independence as Gran Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia. That man was Simón Bolívar. Simón José Antonio de la Satísima Trinidad Bolívar y Palacios was born into a rich, white, educated Creole family in Caracas, Venezuela, in 1783. No one could have predicted that he would one day unite white Creole elites, poor whites, pardos, free non-whites with combinations of black, white, indigenous, or Spanish blood, blacks, and indigenous people, to challenge the powerful Spanish crown. When Bolivar was two years old, his father, a founder of the local elite militia corps, died from tuberculosis. When he was nine, his mother succumbed to the same disease. Bolivar was sent away from the San Mateo estate and his beloved black nurse, Hippolita, to live with his grandfather, who assigned Bolivar's guardianship to his uncles. Bolivar's studies included reading, writing, grammar, literature, geography, mathematics, religion, dancing, fencing, and horsemanship. Among his teachers was Simon Rodriguez, a channel of independent thinking. Bolivar would encounter him years later in Europe. A born leader at 14, Bolivar excelled in the local elite militia corps, rising to second lieutenant within a year. At 15, Bolivar traveled to Spain, where he continued his education in mathematics, history, philosophy, and languages. At 17, he fell in love with Maria Teresa Rodriguez del Toro y Aleza. A year later, they married, settling into his beloved Venezuelan San Mateo family estate. Sadly, eight months later, Maria Teresa died of a malignant fever. Desolate, Bolivar returned to Europe where he heard Rousseau's call for society based on reason, not religion. That call led to additional ideals of liberty, equality, and constitutional government. Bolivar witnessed the coronation of French Emperor Napoleon, who would later force the abdication of the Spanish king, weakening Spain's control of the Captaincy General of Venezuela. On August 15, 1805, on Mont Sacro in Rome, witnessed by his mentor, Simon Rodriguez, and his Venezuelan friend, Fernando del Toro, Bolivar vowed, I swear before you, I swear by the God of my fathers, I swear by my fathers, I swear by my honor, I swear by my country, that I will not rest, body or soul, until I have broken the chains with which Spanish power oppresses us. On July 4, 1811, speaking to the Venezuelan Provincial Congress, Bolivar said, Let us banish fear and lay the foundation stone of American liberty. The next day, Congress declared independence from Spain, and the First Republic of Venezuela was born. Ratified by the landed white Creole elite, the Constitution limited voting rights to property owners and preserved slavery. Lacking equal rights under the new republic, Pardos, blacks, and slaves fought with Spanish royalists against the patriots. Royalist clergy won many citizens to their camp by blaming the revolution for bringing down God's wrath in the form of two earthquakes. 
Commander-in-Chief of the Republic, Francisco de Miranda, failed to pursue the Royalist, eventually surrendering on July 25, 1812. The next summer, Bolivar invaded Venezuela from New Granada, today's Colombia, with a small army. Spanish Captain General Monteverde retaliated by allowing his soldiers to kill hundreds of civilians and patriot prisoners. Bolivar signed a decree of war to the death. Spaniards who did not aid the patriot cause would be executed as traitors to Venezuela. The patriots battled their way to Caracas, where Bolivar was greeted, Viva el Libertador de Venezuela! A provincial representative assembly granted him supreme power of the Second Republic of Venezuela. In Arar, he rode at the head of the cavalry, turning their near defeat into victory. However, in the end, the Second Republic was defeated with help from Pardos, Blacks, and Slaves, led by José Tomás Boves. Reinstated as King of Spain, Ferdinand VII sent more than 10,000 soldiers and a squadron of warships, which completed the reconquest of Venezuela and New Granada by October of 1816. Spanish General Murillo confiscated and sold rebel property. Patriots were hanged, decapitated, or shot. After women, children, the sick, and the elderly suffered at the hands of Spanish soldiers, there was no going back. In December, armed with weapons, munitions, and supplies provided by Haitian President Alexandre Petion, Bolivar and his officers made their way once more to Venezuela. After a brief engagement with the Spanish ship, they landed at the port of Barcelona. Bolivar was later confirmed as President and Captain General of the Third Republic of Venezuela, but he needed an army. To fill the Patriot ranks, Bolivar offered advancement opportunities to Pardos and freedom to slaves. He made senior Codillos, warlords, generals and commanders in the army, and promised to give seized royalist land to Patriot troops. Including the cavalry and the infantry, Bolivar's Patriot Army swelled to 14,000 against Murillo's 11,000 Royalists. On April 2, 1819, at Las Queseras del Medio, more than 1,000 Spanish cavalrymen were in pursuit of 153 llaneros, or plains cattlemen, when General José Antonio Bayez led the famous Vuelvan Caras Maneuver. After pretending to retreat, the Llaneros did a spectacular about turn lightning attack on Murillo's cavalry. Sustaining heavy casualties, the Royalists panicked and fled the battlefield. Bolivar led his army across the border of Venezuela into New Granada in May of 1819. In the savannas, they marched for days through torrential rains and water up to their waist. They marched for a month in the Andes Mountains through freezing rain to heights of 13,000 feet. Many died. When they reached the other side, Bolivar quickly readied his soldiers for battle. At Boyacá, cutting off the royalist retreat to the capital of Bogotá, 2,000 patriots attacked the flanks and center of 3,000 royalist troops. After two hours of battle, the royalists surrendered. In Bogota, Bolivar found Spanish officials had fled in such a hurry they had left behind enough money, weapons, and gear for an army. The constitution created by the Colombian Congress in 1821 joined Venezuela, New Granada, and Quito into a single country, Gran Colombia, with the legislature, president, and commander-in-chief, and an independent judiciary. Congress elected Bolivar as president and Francisco de Paula Santander as vice president. Panama would later join Gran Colombia. On June 24, Pérez Llaneros followed a narrow trail 
to attack the royalist right flank on the Carabobo Plain. Under heavy fire, Colombian and British infantry took possession of a high, narrow pass through the hills, which allowed the Colombian army to overrun the valley, avoiding royalist artillery. After fierce fighting, all but one royalist battalion surrendered. Four days later, Caracas welcomed their liberator. Bolivar led his army across the mountains of Peru to Yunin. On August 6, 1824, he told his 9,000 soldiers, The freedom of the new world is the hope of the universe. You are invincible. The Patriot victory was won by sword and by lance. It was said that the fierce battle charges of the Llaneras made the earth tremble. In December, Antonio José de Souk led the last great victory against the royalists at Ayacucho. On August 6, 1825, a representative assembly of Upper Peru declared independence, adopting the name Bolivar for the new republic, which was later named Bolivia. The assembly appointed Bolivar to supreme executive power, requesting that he draw up a constitution. Twelve days later, he rode triumphantly into La Paz with his loyal friend Suk by his side. After the final battle of the revolution was fought at Tumusla, Suk occupied nearby Potosi, which lies at the foot of Cerro Rico, the major source of silver to the Spanish Empire for 200 years. From Potosi, Bolivar and Suk climbed to the top of the Silver Mountain, where they planted the flags of Gran Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia. After fulfilling his vow to liberate his people from Spanish oppression, Bolivar identified social justice as the next challenge for the revolution. To start, he called for an end to slavery and the distribution of national property to soldiers of the revolution. The liberator died December 17, 1830, but from the hearts of his people, shouts can still be heard, Viva el Libertador!